One of the features of Kotlin that isn't really present in Java in the same way is support for lambdas. And lambdas are anonymous short functions that do some work for you with a minimum of clutter and a minimum of syntax. There's nothing essential about lambdas. Everything that you can write without lambdas, you can write with lambdas. But they do make your code easier to read, cleaner, and they're a great convenience. The thing about lambdas that's interesting is they're so simple and so intuitive that you can start using them almost without realizing you're using them. And then when you do realize you're using them, you can get confused as to how things are working. So the point of this uh, video is to demonstrate to you what lambdas are and how they work by relating them to things that you already know about functions. So let's take a look at this code. This is super simple code where we've got an integer that is a member variable that we're initializing to 31. Then we have this function. We're not even going to talk about this function right now. Then we've got our onCreate function, which is sort of like our main for Android. And we do the things that we have to do uh, in our main function in order to get our app to come up and display properly. We're not going to focus on that. What we are going to focus on is what we're doing with our two buttons. So what buttons am I talking about? Let's take a look at the layout. Wow, this is a really visually appealing app. It's got two buttons, the log button and the increment button. What do these buttons do? The log button logs the output. And what is logging the output? I'm going to show you. It means that it's going to show up here in our log tab. And here's a, a timestamp and uh, the name of our um, uh, app and some information that it's printing out. It's actually printing out a whole bunch of information, most, most of which is not useful to us. But this message we will be printing out and it will be useful to us. So when you hit the log button, you print to the log, which is basically sort of like a printf, and we're going to see the value of member x, which remember is our member variable, which is initialized to 31. Okay. And what we're just going to show is that there are many ways to change the value of this member variable. So the first way we're going to do it is by setting an on click listener to this increment button. And we have seen this idiom before and maybe didn't pay too much attention to it. And then we're really going to break down sort of what's happening. But we say set on click listener. And then we have an open bracket. And here we increment member x by 10. So what do we think is going to happen when you hit increment? Let's find out. So oh, I hope you can guess. OK. So right now we are building. OK, I think, think, we're, think we're set. We go to logcat. Now here's a function of logcat, which is going to be very useful for you when you debug. And that is you can put a regular expression up here, and it will filter the output by that regular expression. So we don't have to see all this clutter. We can only see, we will only see messages that have L-I-S-T-E in them. So if we go back here and we hit log, what's going to happen? Hey, we've logged our output, which says the, it has that timestamp. It has the name of our uh, app. It has D, which says this is a debug message. There are other kinds of logging messages like informational warning. We're going to use debug for this class for, for our purposes. And then there are two strings. There are two arguments to our log function. One is the string listening, and the other is the output of this member function. Um, and here I use string.format. I could have used string interpolation. And it's 31 because it was initialized to 31. And if I hit log again, I get another entry in my log. Now, if I hit increment, this increment button, what's going to happen the next time I hit log? It's not a rhetorical question. M member x will have been incremented, and it will have been incremented by 10. If I increment again, log, log, increment twice, log up to 71. 
This acts exactly the way we would think that it's acting. So what's, what's going on with lambdas? You know, what is this? Well, this is an anonymous function. So what's anonymous about it? Well, a function usually has a bunch of syntax. We, are, uh, we need to tell the um, programming language what the scope of our function is. That's what private means, which means this function is not visible outside of this class. We have to tell it that it's a function. We have to give that function a name. We have to say what the parameters to that function are. And then we can start our open curly brace. What a lambda is, is it lets us skip all of this syntax and go directly to, hey, here's a bit of code. So I want to set an on-click listener that does something. Here's a bit of code. Now you might say, God, syntactically, this just looks weird because whenever I do a function call, I'm used to starting with a parenthesis. Why isn't it this? Well, let's look at this, you know, let's, let's see what, what happens magically. If we try that, hmm, there's some gray uh, squiggly. So the, the compiler is maybe upset with us, but is willing to take what, what we're giving it. And in fact, uh, here, so I hit increment twice and I log again and I increment and I log. In fact, putting this uh, parenthesis is completely valid syntax. It's just not necessary. So whenever the lambda is the last argument to a function, it doesn't need to be in the parentheses. So what is, what is this telling us? Uh, <laughs> Lambda argument should be moved out of parentheses. Why? Because it looks better. That's it. So we get rid of these parentheses and everybody's happier. And that's really what lambdas are about. They're about keeping your, your code uh, looking clean. And, and that, therefore it's easier to understand. So let's come at this out for a second. And instead, let's do something that is functionally equivalent. Well, not exactly because I just want to um, distinguish the cases. But instead of saying set on click listener and defining an anonymous function, let's do set on click listener and pass it a function pointer. And a pointer to what kind of function? Oh, this increment x function. Uh, now, one little detail here, let's, let's get into it. You notice that this uh, increment x function takes a view as a parameter, even though it doesn't actually use it. And if you see the uh, um, Android Studio is helpfully telling us this thing that there's an it parameter and that it parameter is of type view and it's non-null. It is the name of uh, an anonymous, is, is, is the name of a single um, parameter passed to a lambda. So again, it's just a syntactic shortcut rather than saying, hey, I'm passing, you know, V and it's of type view, you can just refer to it in here and it's of type view. And that's what Android Studio is telling us. This is a set, an, an on-click listener has to take a view object. We're just not using that view object. But because it was defined to take a view object, we have to pass it a function that takes a view object. So our, our whatever function we pass has to take a view object, even if we don't deal with it. Okay, so let's get back Let's get back to this. So here we're doing set on click listener, and instead of defining a lambda, we are passing it a pointer to a function. Now, why isn't this just increment x? Well, that's just syntax. So this colon colon, I think you can say, I think you can do this colon colon increment x. This is how you get a pointer to a function in Kotlin. And if you know uh, C, you know, or C++, um, you know, you do something like that in order to get a pointer to a function. It's just a different syntax. C makes it maybe a little too easy to get a pointer to a function. Okay, so let's see this at work. Yep, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna log. We start out at 31, we hit increment, and what is log gonna be? Don't say 41. 36. Increment again, and then it's 41. Increment again, 46. Uh, no magic here. So in, in the Lambda version, we incremented by 10 just to keep things 
just to show you which function is actually being called, I had this increment by five. Okay, but presumably you understand how functions work, and I'm trying to uh, use that to bootstrap your understanding of how lambdas work. Lambdas are just like functions, you just don't have to give them a name. Okay, now you think lambdas are great, and they are. Here's something that's maybe less than great. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. So lambdas are really good when you have very simple functions that take sort of like no parameters or one parameter. They become a little more, uh, you need a little bit more syntax to deal with more complicated um, cases. So this, in, this, in this case, we're, we're sort of using the complicated syntax even though we don't need to. Occasionally, you, you actually need to. So instead of just defining, instead of just um, opening up this curly brace and writing a function and being all cool about it, what we're saying is, okay, I'm passing a parameter to this onclick listener. What I am passing, instead of a pointer to a function, I'm actually passing an object, which uh, Java allows you to do this too. If, you know, uh, comparisons in Java, you can pass it a comparison object, but that comparison object has to be a, an instantiation of a, of a class. Here, Kotlin says uh, you can call it an, an object. It doesn't actually matter which one. It's trying to tell me to convert this to a lambda because that, that would be a better way of expressing this, but this is a perfectly valid way of expressing this. So we have uh, object colon, and what kind of object is it? It's an instance of view.onClickListener. So we are dynamically creating an object here. And when we dynamically create it, we are overriding a function in this object. This should look familiar to you if you're familiar with Java, because this is how we always have to do things in Java. And in fact, um, Android Studio sort of hides some of the syntax automatically, um, whereas in Kotlin, it's actually built into the programming language. So here we're dynamically uh, creating an object. We are overriding its onClick method, and we are using it to increment the member variable by 20. So just to completely have this example run its course, we log and we start with member x at 31. We hit increment. The big question, what will happen now? Increment by 20. So all of these formats, a, um, a built in, you know, a lambda, a pointer to a member function, a dynamically created object, with an overridden uh, function. These are all equivalent. They all mean the same thing. In Kotlin, most of the time, we will lean on lambdas. They're super useful. They make your code very easy to read. They're really easy to use. There's very few gotchas with them. Fantastic. Occasionally, we need to do this thing where uh, we need a little bit more complicated uh, overriding capabilities and we create an object and maybe override multiple functions in here. That's something that you can't quite do with a, a lambda because a lambda is a single function. If you want to override multiple functions, then you need to, to, to dynamically create an object. But that's the deal. Uh, lambdas, they're going to be a, a big part of your programming experience in Kotlin uh, and Android. And uh, that's a good thing.